Everybody knows being overweight is a risk factor for diabetes. But what about people who are thin and still have diabetes? A new study looked at type 2 diabetics with an average BMI of 24.8, 25 being the cutoff between normal and overweight. The study is called Retune, and it consisted of putting the participants on a weight loss program. After 12 months, 70% of the participants were no longer diabetic. Their hemoglobin A1c had normalized. And the study was led by Professor Roy Taylor, who also coined the concept of the personal fat threshold. And this is the idea that we each have a threshold for the amount of fat that we can carry. And above that, we start to have metabolic problems like insulin resistance and diabetes. The exact threshold can be different for you and me, which is why some people can be fairly thin and have diabetes, while others can be overweight or obese and not be diabetic. Overall, there's a trend towards increased risk with increased fat mass, but who exactly, which individuals get diabetes would be determined by this personal threshold. We covered all of this in detail when we chatted with Professor Roy Taylor, so check out those two videos. The first one was on what causes type 2 diabetes, and the second was on how to reverse it. Now, we should point out there are some studies showing improvement of glucose levels without weight loss, so I suspect there is a little bit more to the puzzle. But weight loss is clearly a big factor when it comes to management and reversal of type 2 diabetes, and it's by far the most well-documented to date. In fact, Roy Taylor's direct trial showed with a very robust design, randomized, that type 2 diabetes could be reversed when overweight people lost some of their excess fat mass. And this new study shows that's also possible for people in the normal BMI range. Now, a couple caveats. First, this is still preliminary. These findings were just presented at a scientific meeting, so they're not peer-reviewed and published yet. But I wanted to give you guys advance notice, just in case you or someone you know might be in this position and might benefit from this knowledge. It's estimated that 10% of people with type 2 diabetes have normal BMI. In fact, there was an interview with one of the participants in this new study, and he was explaining that his eyesight was failing, he had headaches, he was fainting, but he never expected it to be diabetes. He had a BMI of 27, which is actually already in the overweight range, but I imagine this happens quite a bit. People who don't feel or look particularly heavy for our society standards, it might not occur to them that they might have diabetes. When we published the original videos with Dr. Taylor, many viewers wrote in and said they followed Dr. Taylor's work and were able to reverse their diabetes, and they were able to do it while maintaining good ApoB. Obviously, that's anecdotal, but it's incredible. It shows the value of putting that information out there for the public to access. So I think it's okay to discuss these recent data as long as we're being clear on the caveats and we're not overstating things. Another caveat I want to point out is they used a small number of subjects. Only 20 people were studied and reported. Okay, let's look at some more of their findings. The BMI of the participants also decreased with the program. That's not surprising. The average BMI by the end was 22.5, and remember, it was 24.8 when it started. The participants also lost a significant amount of body fat, and their fasting insulin level, their triglycerides, and their blood pressure all decreased. They also measured the amount of fat inside the organs, specifically in the liver and the pancreas, and it was decreased during the course of the program as well. And finally, their pancreatic function was improved the ability of the pancreas to secrete insulin was increased. A few more details on the program the participants go through. It consists of a weight loss phase, two to four weeks on a liquid replacement diet. Shakes, basically, amounting to 800 calories a day. And the only thing they were allowed to eat on the side was salad, greens, cucumber, etc. Interestingly, the participants report feeling pretty satisfied with this menu, and their adherence is pretty good. After one cycle of this weight loss phase, 50% of the participants had gone into remission, and after another one or two cycles, another 20% reversed their diabetes, for a total of 70% of the participants. After the weight loss, the program includes a four to six week maintenance phase, where normal foods are reintroduced, and the goal is to achieve a sustainable, solid diet. When we published the original videos and we explained the basics of the program, a lot of people balked in the comments and said, 800 calories a day? We can't live on that forever. Yeah, you're not supposed to. They do that for a little short time uh, to get that fast weight loss, and then they move off of it. Don't 
try to eat 800 calories a day for long periods of time. It's way too low. By the way, this liquid replacement diet is what Professor Taylor uses in his program, but you should be able to get the same results with any diet that helps you lose weight. Low carb diets, low fat, intermittent fasting, high fiber, or just eating mostly whole foods. Whatever helps you lose significant amounts of weight should give you the same benefits. Another thing that's very important for anybody who has diabetes and is gonna to try to lose weight fast, in this type of trial, the participants who are on glucose lowering medication normally stop the meds right before the weight loss because you don't want to go into hypoglycemia. And ideally, if you're going to do something like this, do it under some kind of professional supervision. Okay, how much weight did they lose on this trial? An average of 8% of their body weight lost was required to achieve remission. So pretty achievable if we get organized. If you're, say, a woman at 150 pounds, you need to lose about 12 pounds. If you're a guy who weighs 200 pounds, you need to lose about 16 pounds. That's for this range of BMI, people with normal BMI or close to normal. If you're a bigger guy or gal, you might need to lose a bigger percentage of your body weight. Check out the original videos for details on that. The authors concluded the changes underpinning remission after weight loss in non-obese people with type 2 diabetes are the same as in obese people. And type 2 diabetes occurs if a person becomes too heavy for their own constitution, irrespective of BMI. And finally, weight loss of about 10%, give or take, can bring about type 2 diabetes remission in people classified as having a normal BMI. So I hope this information helps. Feel free to share with anybody who might benefit. For most people with type 2 diabetes, it's not a life sentence. There are ways around it. Take care. See you next time.